hey guys welcome back to my channel Nadja here welcome 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 I am back with another video for you guys listen I am like excuse if you see some like messing up of my makeup in the corner of my eyes I haven't even gone to the bathroom to check it so it is what it is I'll do a little editing if necessary just came off of the prophetic ministry what is it um you know where they have like a night that you get on zoom and you get a prophetic word from the lord and this is from um a church that i've attended for many many years and um the word that i got just really really confirmed some things and um it really helped me so i got off of that and immediately came on here to continue doing what the Lord has called me to do and, and this particular situation is or this particular word is going to definitely be in reference to our belief system and our mindset when it comes to thinking about marriage when it comes to thinking about finding a partner a kingdom partner and I am definitely believing uh, for kingdom marriage and along the way of this journey one thing I can say is that I have had to truthfully learn how to allow the Lord not only to shape and mold me because in the midst before that person comes into your life the Lord is working on you the Lord is teaching you how to be everything that you need to be while being married to him first and foremost, okay? Because we are the bride of Christ. So you don't become a husband or a wife after you've gotten married physically. You already should be a husband or a wife and living up to that within your relationship with the Lord and so during that process of the Lord pruning me and taking me through different um, different places of wilderness to learn my role to learn who I am who I'm supposed to be what needs to be done certain things I needed to be delivered from um, learning more about who I am as a daughter of the Most High God okay and when you know who you are in Christ then your actions and how you respond as a daughter or a son of Christ how you respond is totally different how you believe is totally different your faith is on a different level and so that process of the Lord taking me through all types of stuff, I can't tell you. There's so much stuff the Lord has taken me through or that he's allowed me to experience, which helped to mold me into understanding his voice, understanding his character, understanding what I need, uh, as well as understanding more about who I am. And... A lot of people just think that when it comes to receiving a marriage, a kingdom marriage, and what a kingdom marriage is, is just another, it's not some special marriage that, you know, a kingdom marriage is a marriage between two believers, okay, who know that they are here for purpose. They are here for the kingdom of God and that their marriage is purposed for the kingdom. The marriage is not purposed because they don't want to be alone or because they got tired of being abstinent, okay, or that they just wanted to have a family. A kingdom marriage is two people with purpose who know who they are in God, who know who they are in Christ, coming together as two whole individuals, right, with a purpose in Christ to do kingdom business. All right. So that's what that is. It's so much more than just two people that are con who claim to be Christian, 
they get married because there's a lot of people that are Christian that say they're Christian they get married but they have no idea who they are in Christ they have no idea what their purpose is they don't even have a relationship with him okay so their purpose for getting married was for many different other reasons that were probably more on a selfish you know selfish you know level and I've been there all right I was married before and at that time I was so young when I got married I was only 20 20 22 when I got married and I'm 45 now so let's just say I've learned a lot between that time period so I am married I was married and divorced in eight years and being married so young not understanding who you are in Christ at all living in the world because I was living in the world although I've always been a believer I was still living in the world um, and um, living of the world at that time but getting married so young before I even knew who I was you know you if you don't really understand the importance of sticking through certain things it's so much easier for you to just make a decision to go in another direction and one thing I can say is it most definitely made my life so much harder by making a decision to divorce because it, it was so much other things that began to come at me. Um, counterfeits, all type of situations that I was not spiritually prepared for, right? So we all have a story. We all have a, a past of things that we've done that may not have been the right thing to do wrong decisions that were made in relationships and marriages whatever however and i don't want to hear anybody come onto this platform or making a comment saying that it is unlawful for you to remarry once you've divorced divorcing is no different than any other sin okay it is not a sin that is set apart from every other sin to where if you make a bad choice before you're even in a relationship with the Lord and understand what it is that you need and who you are, that that means that you're now damned and will not have the opportunity to remarry or to try again. Okay, especially if your goal from that from this point is to do it correctly to do it the right way so and i'm not going to go into that situation take it before the lord because i know what the lord has told me personally and so uh so anyway in reference to getting to this place i think that a lot of us need to first recognize the god's plan for marriage and how the Lord created certain things and the specific his mindset in regards to marriage. A lot of times we make up in our own minds based on what we see in the world about the roles that we should play. We each have a role. We each individual person has a role. And I know I used to believe that there was this one special person for me that God would put me with and if, if 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 I didn't realize and I missed it then if that person was gone that that was it which I now know is not true that there's not just one person on earth okay that is is the perfect one for us the Lord gave us the guide you know the guidepost he gave us the principles of what type of person, man or woman, is respected in his eyes based on the principles of this Bible and how we should be, the people that we should be, how we should live. So there's multiple people that could be living their life based on the principles of this Bible, right? Now, does he probably have someone that would work perfectly in mind? Absolutely. Okay, because there are so many different situations where people come together and the Lord brings all types of, you know, 
confirmations to let them know, hey, the Lord is telling me that you're my husband or that you're my wife. There's so many uh, testimonies of that. So yes, the Lord knows what's best for us even when we don't know. But that doesn't mean that there's only one, right? So before I go into kind of what this, what brought this topic to the forefront and why the Lord wanted me to discuss this. Um, I want to just read what the word says. Um, there are cutouts in my Bible that specifically talk about marriage. There are several of them, but I'm only going to read two. And the first one, if you have my Bible, so many of you, I know that you do. It's the first one is on page nine and it is marriage. God's plan. Okay. God's plan for marriage. So I'm going to quickly read that. And then I'm going to flip over to the other, which actually uh, gives us the principles from God in relation to marriage. Okay. All right. God's plan for marriage is introduced here in Genesis 2, 24 and repeated in the Gospels, Matthew 19, 5. And in the epistles, Ephesians 5, 31. Marriage was perfect in its establishment. One man and one woman in a lifetime commitment. God never intended for man to be alone. The very bone from which woman was crafted came from man. Woman was taken out of man, then presented to man in order to complete him. God created the man and the woman in his image with physical and emotional needs that only another human being could meet. No parents were in Eden, but God's plan extended to the future with his formula for oneness in marriage. The partners are to leave their parents and be joined in order to become one. They are to be willing to lay aside all that pertains to their old loyalties and lifestyles of separate goals and plans and be joined to one another. So let's just think about that. All of our plans and goals that we may have for ourselves right now while we are currently living our single lives, the Lord is saying that they are to be willing to lay aside all that pertains to their old loyalties and lifestyles of separate goals and plans and be joined to one another. And so that is to make sure that both people have a plan and loyalties that are created amongst the two of them, not their individual plans that they had before they became married and then try to get the other to come into agreement with their plan. All right. This joining refers to a strong, enduring bond making one unit bound together by unconditional commitment, love, and acceptance, resulting in a combined unit much stronger than either individual had been separately. That is powerful, okay? No other human relationship, not with parent or child, is to supersede the bond between husband and wife. Marriage is a covenant commitment, a vow made to God and the partner, not only to love, but also to be faithful and to endure in this lifelong exclusive relationship. So that being said, guys, when we read that and we think about the fact that it says that this is a vow that's made to God and the partner, and not only to love, but also to be faithful and to endure. This is one of the reasons why Satan comes against marriages so heavily. He comes against marriages so heavily because it is a vow that you have made before God. So anything that you have vowed to God, the enemy will always try to come and destruct. Okay, bring areas and opportunities for unfaithfulness which is what is one of the biggest causes of divorce, the biggest causes of violence 
in marriages, things that go well beyond, okay, just regular, we grew apart, right? So the importance of keeping God in the midst, not just confessing before God at the altar, but keeping God in the midst throughout the marriage is what keeps a bond, keeps a wall of fire, keeps protection over that marriage. So that whenever that whenever there's some separation there, maybe you're not being intimate with your husband or wife, maybe you are not communicating with them, that creates a crack in your foundation. And that crack in your foundation is what will allow the enemy to come in and send someone who is willing to give you what you're not giving, what you're not receiving. So you can't just go on day by day, and for some people, year by year, as if there isn't something that's unnatural and unnormal taking place in your marriage. Or the weed will grow even stronger within your bond. And then that weed begins to separate and there's more of the weed, more of the enemy involved in your covenant than there is God. Marriage is a threefold miracle. Okay, that threefold miracle is including the father. It is a biological miracle by which two people actually become one flesh. You become one flesh in the spirit. It is a social miracle through which two families are grafted together. It is a spiritual miracle and that the marriage relationship pictures the union of Christ and his bride, the church. God clearly intended transparency and openness as part of his plan for the marriage relationship. Vulner vulnerability without shame. So you must be willing and able to be vulnerable with your partner no matter what the issue is whatever the problem is what you feel that you're not receiving from them if you aren't open enough to discuss certain things with your your own flesh because you become one flesh then you will begin to feel even more separate from one another okay that communication is so important so now I'm just going to read the principles from God in regards to marriage, okay? Marriage is the oldest relationship in the world, established by a sovereign creator in the Garden of Eden. In the beautiful, perfect setting, God organized the home by assigning roles and defining responsibilities to Adam and Eve. Adam was to be the provider, which was to tend Okay, to tend the garden, the protector, which was to keep the garden and the leader, which was the Lord God commanded the man. Okay. As the leader, the Lord God commanded the man, which means that leader is led by the Lord. His assigned occupation was to care for the garden and those in it. So in a sense of what we see right now, the husband is to be the provider and to tend to his wife, to protect his wife, and to be the leader that is led by the father. And he is assigned as an occupation to care for the garden and those in it, which is to care for his wife and his children, okay? This demanded the type of servant leadership emulated by Jesus. Jesus is the example. Certainly, there is no room for abuse or tyranny directed to a wife on the part of her husband nor is there the option of a wife's willful disregard for her husband's leadership. Okay? It absolutely says there is no room. There's no room for tyranny. There is no room for disrespect and disregard of leadership. The woman's responsibilities were several. 
she was to be a helper, a comforter, and an encourager. Eve was Adam's partner for carrying out God's purpose to multiply and replenish the earth. So there it, it, it clearly says that Eve was Adam's partner in order to carry out God's purpose. The same goes for the marriages that he puts together today. The woman as the helper is to come together with the husband in order to carry out God's purpose, not our purpose. She was to be his closest earthly companion, relieving his loneliness. Okay? So your husband, women, is supposed to be your best friend. You are supposed to be his comforter. You are to be his helper. Okay? His encourager. And when, believe it or not, when the husband does receives all these things, it is typically natural for him to operate in the role of being a leader. When we do our part, okay? And this is one of the issues. And this, this word is going completely outside of what the original purpose was, but I'm going with the flow. But when we do not tend to our own roles and making sure that we are doing what God has called for us to do as husband or as wife, then, and we're so consumed with worrying about what the person on the other side is or is not doing, then we tend to be focused on the wrong thing, okay? Even if the other person is not properly handling something, if we make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to do, if we're doing our part as helper, as comforter, as encourager, then, and we're aside from that, going before our father, about things that are taking place with the other spouse. And we, there's no blame, we're blameless in regards to our areas of responsibility. The Lord will speak and the Lord will convict where needed on the part of the other. Okay? We have to make sure that we understand our role. And that we aren't not doing our role because the other is lacking in doing theirs. We can't have a tit, tick for tat attitude in regards to making the right choices in marriage. Okay? Let's keep reading. When sin entered the world, chaos followed. God's plan did not change but it was distorted by the sinful choices of Adam and Eve and their descendants. God let Adam and Eve choose to sin, but he did not let them choose sin's consequences. Okay, so when we sin, we have the choice to sin, but we don't get to choose the consequences behind our sinful acts. Fear emerged. They were afraid to face God because of their disobedience. They were cast out of their idyllic home with this foretelling. Adam's work would become difficult because he would have to contend the thorns and thistles and Eve would suffer pain in childbirth. Adam and Eve in their posterity would have spiritual warfare until the end of time. You can say that again. <laughs> Despite the failure of Adam and Eve, God's principles for marriage have remained the same. According to their God-defined roles, husbands are to use their God-given authority to provide, to protect, and to love. And wives are to help their husbands and submit to their God-directed leadership. Did you hear that? You are to submit to their God directed leadership not our fleshly directed leadership okay fellas 
a lot of people like to look at the term or the, the, the aspect of marriage in thinking that, okay, you're my wife, you're my helper, you're supposed to submit to me. But husbands or potential husbands, you need to make sure that you are operating properly based on the God-led, God-directed leadership that you are providing to your family. If you are directing them based on your own mindset, your fleshly desires, thoughts, and beliefs that are outside of the direction of Christ, then you're not leading properly. And then that will in turn cause some area of contention between your wife trusting that she can follow you and that you're going to lead lead them correctly. Now, does So Oh, I, I got to be careful with my words, okay? So, one thing I can say is if a woman can see, if a wife can see that her husband is leading her in a way that is outside of the principles of this scripture, she's not obligated to follow you. Because she should not be led into sin by anyone. Okay? If there is something that would cause her to be disobedient to Christ and the word, then she's not obligated to submit. Because although you become one flesh, when you die and you go to meet Christ, you don't go together. You go individually. Okay, so you both still have a responsibility to follow Christ. Okay, husbands and wives can ignore God's program for the home. But when a spiritual principle is violated, division is the result. That is the result. They can seek to redefine God's plan according to their own desires and circumstances. But ultimately, human wisdom cannot compete with the all-wise God. Didn't I just say that? Your own human wisdom cannot compete. So you will create division if you are being led by your own fleshly mindset. Okay? Your human wisdom. There can be no unity, no contentment, and no peace. Only a house that is divided. In a marriage that defies God's principles, okay? Because again, you are, a, as I said on the previous one, you are a three-fold miracle. Three-fold means there's the husband, there's the wife, and there is the Lord in the center, so if the husband is not receiving guidance and God directed leadership from Jesus, who is the third, you know, he's the center cord. Then there becomes division. There becomes division. All right. Husbands and wives are challenged to spend time, energy and creativity looking for ways to conform to servant leadership and Christ-like submission. I absolutely love everything about how this Bible just breaks down so much stuff that just makes you really truly understand more about the Word of God. It is so powerful to be able to get these things. But let me just first and foremost say why I was supposed to come and do this video, but it turned into more of a teaching. <laughs> um, I was actually supposed to come and share that for those of you who are believing for marriage, right? And maybe you are, um, you're in a space where you're grateful that the Lord has delivered you, has brought you out of a, mental, a mentality or just you may be a completely different person. Like me, I'm a completely different person from who I was when I was in my last relationship or last marriage. My walk with the Lord is so important to me. And I 
would refuse to let anything or anyone come in between that. And we know that whenever you join with someone else in a covenant, that is one of the biggest decisions that you can ever make in your life. Which means if you make a covenant with the wrong person, someone that wasn't supposed to be there, it can alter your entire direction or purpose that God had for you. And so when we have this mindset, we can tend to court or date or meet people in a way that can come across a little judgmental or we can be overly critical of who that person is, how their walk is, and especially because of someone like me who I have a platform, I have a ministry, there's certain responsibility that I have in doing deliverance and praying for people and there are certain levels of warfare that could come against me if the person I'm in covenant with, because we become one, are unknowingly or just ignorantly opening spiritual doors that would allow the enemy to come in and attack me. Because I know that I need someone who understands the principles of the word of God. And because I know that I need someone who can properly lead, as I just read, who has a relationship with the Lord, but not someone who is wanting a relationship with the Lord because I said they need a certain type of relationship with the Lord, if that makes sense. Like they need to already have that. They need to all need to already have a desire to um, be led by the Lord. They need to already have a desire to move in purpose. Okay. If you're not already walking in that area, for me, it's like we're not going to be equally yoked. Right, because I'm not gonna to want to go into a covenant with someone where I'm taking on the leadership role, and that would that's t that tends to be what would happen. <laughs> I would be the one. The roles would be reversed. Okay, I know that because of my personality, I need someone who's not timid. I need someone who is a a leader. I need someone. Who's not passive. That being said, I come across sometimes as if people people might look at me and think um, they're they're too nervous to approach me because I carry. A lot of people say that I carry myself as if I'm already married, or um, when I'm just out and about, people are like. You you need to learn how to smile more at people. Maybe people would feel more welcome to speaking to you, opening up and saying things. But people like I'm one of those people. I'm I'm very humbled. You know, I, I'm not going to treat you any kind of way if you approach me, even if I'm not interested. Right. So. But the whole point to this is we need to stop being so critical. Um. If the person doesn't read the word every single day or they don't go to church every single Sunday or, you know, their walk just might not look exactly how you think it should. Because you never really know how the Lord might use you to um, to plant a seed in that person's heart, to plant a seed where the Lord will cause it to grow. And it will be a natural desire, even even though you might speak to them for the first time and it may not have been there before you came into their lives. Go into certain situations with meeting people with the intent to get to know them as a friend. Enjoy meeting people as long as there is no obvious red flags where they're a Mason or you know, they're married or they are um, abusive. They have an abusive past or, you know what I mean? If there is an obvious thing that the Lord has spoken to you 
that this person is not it and some things the Lord may not have to speak, you know, um, then just take your time in getting to know them, okay? Have friendly conversation. And I, I actually had to learn this. The Lord spoke it to me when I was in my study time, but then he confirmed it after looking at Dr. Alexis, her word. Um, she actually interviewed a young lady who, she was a 40 year old virgin and she got married and her story went really, really big and so, um, because she prayed for her, I think it was her close friends or her bridesmaids that were not married at her wedding. She prayed for them. So instead of taking her bouquet and throwing it and letting one person catch it, I think she gave like a flower to each of them out of her bouquet to let them know that you all are worthy of marriage. You all are worthy of having a king, right, on earth that mimics Jesus. And I thought that was so profound. But one thing that she said was that she spent so much of her life worrying so heavily about not trying not to sin that she did not get a chance to truly enjoy her life, like before 40, like going and doing things for herself that um, would just allow her to enjoy herself, allow her to enjoy meeting people. So to basically sum all this up, guys, and I say this because I made the choice. I did this. Um, I'm, I'm so quick to cut people off. <laughs> I'm so quick to cut people off. And I have I, the Lord was like, you, you got to stop doing this. OK, you're going to push away the wrong person. Because you're being too critical too soon. But I, I've done it to where um, there's someone that I met or had a conversation with on the phone. And the first night I was like, this isn't going to work. We're, we're, we're just, you're too different. We're not compatible. And um, yeah, I never talked to him again. <laughs> and there are some people that God will immediately, based on your discernment, reveal to you that this is not the person especially if it's somebody from the past that the lord told you way back when that wasn't your spouse right nine times out of ten he's not going to tell you to revisit someone from the past unless the lord has worked on them and they're a prodigal and he's bringing them back into a space um that's necessary but that is definitely the Lord is leading any situation that's like that. Okay. So guys, let's, in order for us to be able to be present, in order for us to be able to not come across as being overly judgmental or coming across as if we think that we're better than the person that we're um, trying to get to know because they're different or in a different space in their walk, um, we have to just focus on getting to know the person. Just focus on enjoying getting to know them as a friend. Allow opportunity for the Lord to then begin to reveal to you certain things that may or may not align with them being a spouse. Okay. But um, yeah, uh, just take your time getting to know them and and wait for the lord's replies okay wait for the lord's answers wait for the lord to reveal always have your eyes and ears open ready and willing to receive any message the lord may try to give you about whether or not that person is or isn't the one okay don't get so emotionally caught up into people where you feel like oh he's so handsome and oh he just makes me feel get outside of your feelings you got to separate from your feelings because when you're too caught up in your feelings in that way, it's hard for you to be able to hear the Lord or you might hear him and you might just, you might pretend to not hear him and ignore, okay? Ignore the Lord telling you that ain't the one, babe, okay? So I think I've um, 
eat, reach the end of this video. I definitely did not expect for this video to be as long as it was, but obviously the Lord had more to say in regards to the topic. So I pray that it's been beneficial to you guys, whatever it is that's on your mind in regards to these words that were just spoken, make sure you leave a comment, make sure you share it with someone who needs to know and understand some of these things and like this video guys. All right. I love you and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.